Hello, and welcome to another satisfactory video. Today, we're going to be talking all about trains. We're going to talk about how the stations work, tips on laying tracks, which can be a little finicky, and how signals work. If you're interested in more satisfactory build video guides, be sure to subscribe to my channel. All right, without further ado, let's get started with how the stations work. So first we're going to talk about how the stations work, and they are big boys, aren't they? So first, they do need power. But only one side actually needs power because power actually transmits along these rails, so the hover pack works very well with them. So as you can see, you know, this doesn't have any connections. You can actually transmit power to another portion of your base via the train tracks, so you don't have to lay power poles along your tracks. So each freight platform is going to be able to be set to load or unload. If it's set to load, that means the stuff going in these ports over here will go into the train. And then if I set it to unload over here, so yeah, this is set to yeah, unload. That means the stuff from the train is going to go into here, into the freight platform, and fill up the storage, and then can be output. There are two inputs and two outputs on each platform, so you know keep that in mind when you're calculating your belt throughputs and all that. Now, how the heck do we add a train? Quite simply, we add a locomotive here. And then you can add a freight car behind. There are also uh, fluid pl platforms for liquids if you so choose. So if you're transmitting a liquid, obviously use that one. So let's go into the train station, set our timetable. So it's going to give us the train that we have. So we're going to set for this train. And each station is going to start with a name. You can name it something else if you want. So let's name this... Test load. Then we'll need this one. Test unload. And then we go back to our train station and then to our timetable. And then we say, okay, this train is going to start at test load and then go to test unload and then it's going to loop. So we'll save changes and turn on self driving. We made our nice little loop, look at us. Something else I want to mention though is that you can set up like a two-headed uh, train with a single track in between. This basically means you can only have one train on this line. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we get to signaling, but you know this could be good if, if you're in this type of situation where you only really need one train between two points. I think generally it's it's a bit more flexible for you if you're able to set up you know, a two-way train system, but we'll talk more about that when we get into signaling. Now that we know how stations work, let's talk about how to actually lay the tracks because it can be a little bit tricky. All right, so let's talk about the process for laying some tracks. So what I like to do, especially for long, long sections of track, I like to set like 10 at a time like this. So I go one zoop, and I go from one end to the other end, and this is going to ensure that your tracks stay nice and straight. Now you don't need to put supports, but just because it looks nice, every 10 is also where I set my supports. Oh, the... the you oh. Are so lucky Am I so lucky? Oh my goodness, I'm so lucky, aren't I? I hope that's not too annoying. <laughs> continue this. Yeah, and then I usually use that to just line it up. Comply. And then I'll put, you know, some type of support here. Alright, just zoop it. Bonk. 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 And then I just repeat the process. Also, 
what's nice is I usually put hypertubes in between. So I, I I'll put the hypertube on here and then uh, and then connect it that way. We also just kind of do it like this, where you go one zoop, like this, and then you go straight. Oh, goodness, this is much easier with the hover pack, but you don't really need the hover pack even. And then you're not wasting uh, materials and concrete if you delete this. You don't have to delete it if you if you prefer the look. That's usually what I do. Now, let's talk about turns. So, the best way to do a turn is to just go 3x3 three three on foundations. So, here we're at the edge of this foundation. We go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And it's going to be good to go. Then you can proceed with your, you know, every 10 and a zoop situation. Now the other one's going to be a little bit trickier because we want it to start at the same spot. So another good method is to just lay a straight piece first and then connect it later. That way this straight piece is going to remain straight. So the reason I say it's generally better to lay your straight pieces first is if it's not exactly straight, you're going to get into this situation where... Oh my gosh, that was actually extra bad. <laughs> you're going to get into the situation where you have these like wavy guys. So if you're seeing something like this where your, your tracks are waving back and forth like this, no matter how hard you try, they wave back and forth. Um, just go ahead and delete a bunch of section, and then go like two foundations away, and lay a straight piece. That way it'll be, you know, straightening itself out on the end, and then you can just connect and have only a little bit of a wave there. And you'll be good to go, and then, you know, your, your tracks will still be straight and symmetrical. Now let's talk about inclines. So inclines are going to kind of be, you know, similar to laying straight pieces, right? But we're going to be using ramps. The 4 meter double ramp is, you know, you're guaranteed to have a good experience with that. The steeper ramp, you cannot build a uh, a rail with just the steep ramps. It's going to be too steep for your train. You can actually build with a combination of four and eight double ramps, but you know, then you gotta you know keep track of all that. So I just like using the the four meter double ramps. So very similarly, I start here. You might actually want to start a little bit, you know, sooner because we're going to we're going to enter this this situation where it's going to kind of bend like this in. And it's going to kind of clip like that. So, you can either just get rid of it or we can ooh, don't fall. Go like one, two, three. Ramp. And then go up like this. So it's a bit smoother of an incline. Actually, there's a, there's a power pole here I can take. And then to keep it consistent, you just go over like that. And then we have our incline. And again, similar to the curves, if you're coming into a curve and then have this type of incline, you're going to want to make sure that you're laying the straight piece and then connecting it later on. So yeah, that's ramps.
now it is time to talk about signals. This is something that I think a lot of people are struggling with since they added it to the game. It actually used to be where the trains would just clip into one another, so you didn't really have to worry about signals. And, you know, I mentioned the the uh, the two-headed train last uh, a little bit earlier on. And you could actually set up two-way trains and they would just clip into one another. There would be problems, though, if they, like, synced up. But this is obviously a lot more realistic, a lot more um, something to think about, something to think about, something to solve. So... There are two types of signals in the game, so let's go to our codex, or our build menu. And we have first the block signal. So, train signals are used to direct the movement of the trains, like avoid collisions and bottlenecks. Block signals can be placed to create blocks between one another. When a train is occupying such a block, other trains will be unable to enter it. Signals are directional and trains are unable to move in this direction so be sure to set up signals in both directions for bi-directional railways so that's the block signal it's going to create different blocks where only one train can be in a particular block if you've ever played roller coaster tycoon you know you understand the concept there we also have the path signals so they're used to uh their advanced signals and they're similar to block signals, but instead of occupying the entire block, trains reserve a specific path through and will only enter the block if their path allows them to fully pass through it. So here's an example of a section that I have created. And basically the rule of thumb is going to be if you have something where multiple paths can be taken, you're going to put a path signal. If you have something where there's only one way through, you're going to put a block signal. And at the end of an intersection, where you have multiple paths coming in together, you're going to put a block signal. Now the reason we want to use path signals over block signals is if we take this signal here. We're coming along this way. If a train is coming in the opposite direction, we don't need to stop here, right? We don't need to stop here if a train is just coming in this opposite direction. So what the path signal is going to do is it's going to say, Oh, this path, this piece of track is going to be clear. So you don't have to worry about going through. See, in that instance, it was like, okay, this piece of track is clear so that train was able to go it's going to reserve the portion of the section so let's take a look at another example here here's a typical outpost that i usually make so we start with a block signal that will you know make this a, into its very own section then here we have a path signal because again we're splitting off into opposite directions. So what this will prevent is if there's a train coming this way and a train going straight, this train here will not have to stop if this is only crossing that path. It will stop if it needs to make this left turn though. Then we have a block signal here to create a little bit of a waiting section just in case something gets clogged up up ahead. And then again, over here, we have a path signal because we're, you know, dividing our, our, uh, our block into, you know, different paths. Another path signal here, and then into the back of these stations. Ooh, I have a block signal here that I don't need. Now, after the stations, we also need path signals. This is because we're going to have multiple trains coming in to here. So we want to make sure that the trains wait for their turn and don't just go uh, without you know waiting to get into this section. So the path signal will have the train check. Okay, is this whole section clear? Okay, yes, I can go. And then we have a block signal at the end to cap it off. 
So, I hope you found this guide useful. I hope you learned something new or found something helpful. Uh, if you're interested in more video guides like these, be sure to subscribe. I also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash billythedoor. Hope to see you come hang out. And with that, that's all for me. Take care.